So I explained to you guys I had a Ford Fusion that came in here with an aftermarket warranty and um, it was having an underboost condition which was a uh, PO299. And when I tested the TCB2 sensor, it failed. When I tested TCB1, it didn't fail, but it was really, really, really weak. And those two work together to control the actual turbo function. Here's one of them attached here. And this basically sits up on top of this bracket underneath the vehicle. This is a two liter all wheel drive EcoBoost Fusion. It sits here. And the customer a couple times, this is where techs get complacent. They try to listen to the customer complaint. They try to duplicate it. Sometimes they can't duplicate it. This customer came here twice. Um, TCB2 failed. I replaced it. TCB1 was kind of acting up. I just went ahead and replaced it anyway. I told the warranty company what was going on. I was very open and honest with them. They said, you know what? Put the sensors on it because if we don't know it's a turbo, we don't want to throw you know, a couple thousand dollars at a vehicle that we're not even sure of. Um, just put the sensors on there. Let's see what happens. Well, the customer drove it for like another week and a half. Sure enough, the rattle and the sound and stuff from the back of the engine was getting louder. He pulled up in the service drive, and luckily I was in a break between vehicles. And he said, hey, why don't you come out here real quick? That light's back on again. It's PO299 under boost, but no other codes associated with it. So I run out there, it's sitting in the service drive, and I could hear that rattling. It's like so loud. And um, these turbos, on they could be faulty. Some of it maintenance, some of it design. So this right here is part of this wastegate in here. You just sit there and just flat back and forth. And that rattle was getting so loud. Even like with it forced in its fully, fully closed position and me putting all the pressure on it outside, even with this rod adjusted in, if you want it, that still sits there and flaps. It doesn't do enough to actually and this is what's causing that underboost condition. It's not able to build boost like it, like like you want. So the, the engine sees that, and it, it's not effective right away when the light sets. Uh, you're fine when it's cold, and as it warms up and warms up and warms up, and you get about an hour, hour and a half into a long drive, shut the vehicle off, go to turn back on, underboost condition, and this sound because he puts on like a thousand miles a week on this thing. The sound was just crazy, rattling, rattling, rattling. And I've done a lot of these. I've just never made a video about it. And this is the one that is on a uh, 2016, 2016 or 2017 Ford Fusion 2.0 all wheel drive. Um, I think it's like the loaded, I don't know if that's a platinum or what that is. I don't think it's, a, it maybe, maybe it is. It's got leather seats. It's got everything. It's got a sunroof and stuff like that. And uh, the kid's very passionate about his vehicle because he, he'll put a thousand miles on it in a week because he drives uh, interstate construction, Illinois and Wisconsin and all these other places. Um, so he puts a lot of miles on it. This was the problem with that underboost condition. So uh, I'm going to be putting a new turbo on it, new O-rings, uh, new banjo bolt and stuff. Uh, the warranty company didn't approve everything uh, that I wanted to use, nothing bolt wise, but they did approve most of it. It's, and how I did this is I did it a little bit different than the way the, the workshop manual says to do it. The workshop manual wants you to kind of finagle and move stuff around in the back of the engine and work it out. Um, we actually dropped the subframe out of the car. 21 millimeter bolts in the back, 21 millimeter bolts in the front. Pull your lower control arm loose, your uh, sway bar link loose, and um, your tie rod in. Just knock all that loose and get it out of there. And then drop your cradle down a little bit, maybe just like six to 10 inches, reach up in there and unplug your connectors for your steering rack and lay your main harness out to the side and then just go ahead and drop it straight on the ground. Oh, I forgot. There's a T40 steering knuckle bolt. You gotta get up inside the car before you start any of this and pull that T40 out of there. And uh, when you pull the T40 out of there, they, they're supposed to be replaceable, but I've seen guys Loctite them and reuse them. But it was a simple job overall, I mean, just coolant hoses, uh, the oil drain for the turbo, the oil feed for the turbo, and then uh, just a suggestion. Um, they want you, Ford wants you to remove the catalytic converter and all that. There's actually no reason to do that. If you're very careful about what you do, you can actually pull your top man or your, your top steer. You can pull these two studs out, and then before you loosen these, or you can you can do this after this clamp right here. There's one single gasket that goes from here to the catalytic converter. 
You can actually loosen up this clamp, pull it off to the side. It's kind of a booger to get off. And then start working your bottom bolts out here. And they won't come through. They won't come through this flange because there's a collar on them from behind that stops them from going through. And uh, when you go to pull these bottom bolts out, you'll work them out slowly, 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 slowly. And this thing will start to rotate. The turbo will start to rotate as you're pulling them out. And just do a little here, do a little here, do a little here, do a little here. And as you go back and forth, you'll actually see that it comes out nice and easy with just a little bit of pressure, no damage to the cylinder head or anything like that. And then you can just slide the turbo right out the side and drop it down. There's no pulling the catalytic converter and all that other stuff. It's just, it's a waste of time to do all that. It's not necessary. So... I'm going to go ahead with the install, put everything back together, um, new drain tube, feed tube, new coolant, or add what coolant I lost out in there, and uh, just make sure everything's buttoned back up real good. When you order the turbo through Ford, uh, you actually get a new uh, sensor and little hose assembly already attached to it. Just like you see this is exactly how it comes. You'll have to order your studs, you'll have to order your gasket here, you'll have to order your uh, turbo to catalytic converter gasket. You'll have to order a new drain tube. I would not reuse the, the old drain tube with a new gasket. Um, and then you'll have to order the new crush washers and stuff for each one of the lines. The oil feed and the coolant lines, they all need to be replaced. But other than that, not a hard job. Just be patient. Take your time. Don't rush it. And just do good quality work. That's all. Make the customer happy. They'll come back to see you again. Y'all be blessed. Thank you for watching the video. Thank you for tuning in as always. Thank you for the new people that are on the channel. There's a couple of Ford engineers that are watching my channel and stuff now. I appreciate you guys being here and thank you for uh, letting me show you what I see in the field and I appreciate your guys' time as well.